I'm, I'm Brandon Llewellyn. I'm the, uh, I started the Liberty Report, the Mesa County Liberty Report um, a while back. And I just started it to kind of be like a little local media outlet, you know, while there's elections going on. And um, our paper isn't my favorite media outlet in the world. So, and most people, it isn't either. So I started that. Long story short though, I'm here today to present just some information about what happened with um, Tina Peters and the the whole situation involving, you know, why is she indicted and why, what happened in all this, you know. Um, there's been so many stories from both sides, all sides and everybody, just so many rumors. And what I tried to do in this video is put together um, just the, the best, clearest evidence of what happened and, and why. And then, you know, you can, you can go through it, the information. I have the videos that we're gonna insert into this, um, the shorter clips of the different statements that people made that helps, you know, everybody kind of grasp what happened. And my goal in this is not to um, attack anybody or to be, you know, causing any kind of problem. I, my goal is, is just to bring clarity to the situation. I would like to just see people have full, you know, a full amount of information so that they can understand what happened. And at the end of this, I'm gonna ask some really hard questions that aren't answered with all these videos. Um, and these are the questions that I asked since the, this whole thing began, you know. Um, because I started the Liberty Report, people started asking me, why don't, why aren't you going about, on about what happened with Tina Peters? And I was in the middle of like two other major projects and I couldn't get to it. Um, but I just started asking questions slowly. And then, you know, after, uh, you know, a little while, I was finally starting to gather all the information, gather the videos, gather, you know, the stuff we're going to present today. And after I started to really put the pieces together, I, uh, the questions just kept coming. Um, and so the, the original question that I had um, when anybody asked me about, you know, what happened and why is Tina Peters um, under investigation and what is, what is all this about? My question was, why did she shut off the cameras? So I was just asking that question, right? Like, I didn't, I didn't know what happened. I didn't know why she was, like, she was... The investigation launched because some passwords ended up on the internet, on somebody's Telegram channel. Um, and these are secure passwords that probably you wouldn't want to have on the internet from our election machines. And, um, but so I, I was asking, why did this investigation start? Okay, that kind of makes sense. But, but why did, and, the, and then the, that other question is, why did she shut off the cameras? Because she shut them off for, you know, a period of time before this whole thing happened and afterwards. And after asking that original question, I couldn't get answers um, out of people. And so I just had to wait for all of the evidence to show up to kind of put that puzzle piece together. Um, and so, you know, we're going to go through it today. I have brought... Um, just a few of them. I'm not going to go through everything. Um, a lot of the documents and the links will be posted in the comment section or in the, um, you know, with the video. So you can go through the links yourself. You can do your own research. You don't have to take my word for it. That's why we're playing other people's videos, work, you know, putting their words to it, not, not what I say. Um, I'm just trying to, trying to help describe it as we're going along. But you can go through it all yourself. And um, so we're gonna start with the, you know, one of the final pieces of the puzzle that helped me and everybody else kind of figure out what had actually happened that led to, to her shutting off the cameras and, um, you know, why this whole thing began. So the background was, you know, uh, Sharona and uh, she's America's mom. A lot of people know about her. She had come to town and started a canvassing effort um, to canvas to see if there was anything wrong with the 2020 election. Um, and I uh, knew about that. 
I wasn't involved in that, but I knew about it and I um, was really curious what to see what they would find, you know, the whole time. Um, at some point she had presented some of that canvassing stuff to the uh, clerk's office and met with the clerk, um, Tina, and Tina ended up coming to a conference that they had had uh, with a guy named Dr. Frank. And they, you know, somehow they started talking. Um, and then all of that led to um, this meeting in Tina's office. This is from the arrest affidavit for Sandra Brown, which was one of Tina's employees. And um, so I'm just gonna read it off real quick and then we'll keep going. During, uh, on April 23rd, 20, 2021, Peters convened a meeting in her office. One meeting uh, participant secretly audio recorded part of the meeting on audio from a cell phone and subsequently provided the recording to investigators. Those in attendance from the clerk and recorder's office were Peters, uh, Nisley, Bantz, Winholtz, and Brown. Non-employees present for the meeting were Sharona Bishop, a local political activist and former campaign manager, um, and Douglas G. Frank, an Ohio-based high school mathematics teacher who travels across the country conducting presentations and creating YouTube videos asserting that the 2020 election was marred by fraud, and an in individual named Maurice, believed to be later identified as Maurice Emmer. During the meeting, uh, based on the partial recording, so this is just quoting the recording, this is their evidence, um, Frank asserts that the county election, the county's election management system is, is vulnerable to outside interference and is likely accessible remotely. Um, Peters asked Frank if Frank can open the voting machines. Frank responded that opening the machines is against the law because you signed a contract. Peters responded, okay, all right. Bishop, the local activist, raised the issue of uh, the Mesa County trusted build set for late May on May 26th through 27th when they come, what's the plan? One of the employees responds, the plan, as far as I know, they're updating the software. Peters then asked Frank, I'm going to step out on a limb. Would you like to come May 26th? Bishop explained to Frank that they're doing an audit here. They're going to wipe the machines. Frank responded, I don't think I'm your guy to do that audit, but I know a team and they'll do it for you. And they'll come in with the best in the country. Peters then asked Bantz to leave the room. Brandy might have to leave while we talk about this. Why don't you leave while we talk about, well, why don't you leave Stephanie? You might need to walk out too. Brown was not asked to leave in the recording. Sandra Brown was the, uh, actually managed the room during the elections and ran the machines. That starts this whole idea off of the trusted build and trying to get a forensic image. And so from there, you know, what we know is they contacted um, this team that Dr. Frank had said uh, he would send. And the, the person that came, his name was Conan Hayes. Now that is also evidence in here, but his name has been uh, basically linked to this from the very beginning, uh, since the Mike Lindell Cyber Symposium. His name was mentioned on stage by a guy named Ron Watkins. So since the very beginning, people have said, what does Conan Hayes have to do with this? Um, because, and we're gonna play those videos here in a little bit. Um, but later on, it basically got confirmed that it was Conan Hayes. And then now Conan Hayes is actually under investigation according to this arrest affidavit. After that, uh, there is a, in, in the, in this affidavit, there's a picture of basically a receipt from a hotel in town, uh, for Conan James Hayes, or it says James Hayes. And it was paid for by Sharona Bishop, $831.40 to reserve the room. Um, and then it shows, you know, they obtained cell phone records for a known phone number belonging to Conan Hayes. And they, they have the flight that he was on and it showed him in California. And then it showed him uh, using a tower in Mesa County. So they have the cell phone records of where 
Conan Hayes was. So they they put this evidence together to show that he came to town. They're they're adding evidence to it. Um, and then later on, it this goes through. You can read it yourself. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, but it goes through when the key cards were used. So according to after I've gone through all this, basically, he came to town. He he did the first image. Um, the first forensic image before the trusted build. And then he was in the room for the trusted build. And then after the trusted build, somebody else did the final part, the final forensic image. I, I believe that's how it went after going through all of this. And then um, Conan, uh, you know, after this was over, uh, he left town. Tina had sent him a package and so i'm going through this just trying to understand you know what what is this you know why why did they sneak him in it doesn't make sense to me you know they shut the cameras off and then they snuck this guy in and then so i, I through video evidence and through tina's own words um and we're showing those videos here in a little bit too we basically have what her words are uh, and why she said she snuck him in. Now, it's really important to note this. It's really important. Um, she did not admit this until after the grand jury trial, which was months and months after this whole thing happened. Up until the grand jury trial, she was continuing to try to hide Conan Hayes' identity. And it was only after the grand jury trial, while kind of disputing with uh, Gerald Wood, which was the, the man that wasn't an actual employee of the county, that uh, they had used his ID card to get Conan Hayes in. He was at a graduation party. Peter says he may not have been there, but he knew she was using his badge to protect the identity of the cyber expert who was there. He never filled out an employment application. That right there should give you an idea. He knew what was going to happen with his badge. That evidence is also in the affidavit. Essentially, Jerry Wood uh, was asked to come down to the office and he, you know, he went through the interview that, he, they, that they had and they gave him a badge. But they never had him fill out the employment application. And then he left after the cyber conference or actually yeah right at the end of the cyber conference his house was raided by the fbi or the the da and then his house was later raided again by the fbi and we will have links for all of his uh testimony that he's given like on um interviews so you can go through that yourself you know uh but jerry wood claims that he didn't know that this was going to happen that they used his id without him being aware and he provided all the evidence in the grand jury trial because he was suspect number one. After the grand jury trial, he became a victim. Uh, the jury declared him a victim and of identity theft. Now, we're gonna play a couple of videos and then I'm gonna ask the hard questions that, I'm, that still aren't answered. The first video is a guy named Ron Watkins, and um, when Conan Hayes left, he somehow got this information to Ron Watkins, who then put it out on his Telegram channel. On that Telegram channel was where passwords were shown. Um, it was the video that they had taken, which showed the passwords to get into the computers. Well. When it, sh when it hit his Telegram channel, then the Secretary of State's office found it and started to launch this investigation and contacted our DA and everything. And at that point, like I'm trying to make sure everybody knows, at that point, they had covered up who they brought in and why they brought him in and all of that. Nobody knew this, okay? So the DA started investigating and then, um, you know, there was no admission that this had ever, that this other individual had been brought in, Conan, until after that grand jury trial. So that whole time, they didn't know what was going on, but they could tell there was something going on. There was a lie going on of some kind. Um, and so Ron Watkins, after Conan Hayes gives the information, gives the video to Ron Watkins, it ends up on his Telegram channel. This video is going to be um, when 
Ron Watkins was showing the the forensic image on stage. What he announces is that Conan Hayes has some hard drives that he needs to return to Tina Peters. Um, and then, just to clarify this, it was later, later came out, Tina said that there were no hard drives that Conan had. And I believe he, they was just referring to the um, forensic images. Uh, we have a problem. Oh, it's just... Uh, my lawyer, my lawyer just called me Ty Clevenger, Mr. Ty Clevenger. And he said uh, that I should put out this statement. And I just learned that Conan James Hayes may have taken, without authorization, the actual hard drives from the Mesa County, or the Mesa, Colorado County Clerk. And he needs to produce those hard drives immediately and return them to the clerk. And we should stop this data review until he produces the hard drives. The second video is a second clip of Ron Watkins making an, an um, adding to his announcement um, about, you know, the the hard drives, and um, it. This one actually mentioned Sharona Bishop. And we're going to go ahead and play that one right now. I just want to update that last statement. Uh, so <clears throat> the information that Ty Clevenger received was from Sharana Bishop. And now she has informed Mr. Clevenger that Conan did have permission to take the hard drive, but did not have permission to upload it. Ms. Bishop indicated to Mr. Clevenger that she was an affiliate of Mrs. Peters. And now Mr. Clevenger is not sure whether that is in truth. Okay, so as you can see in the first video, um, he mentioned that Conan Hayes had some hard drives from Mesa County um, and he needed to return them. In the second video, he said that um, Conan Hayes actually had permission to have the hard drives, but he didn't have permission to upload them. She comes out and um, is trying to explain that there were no hard drives ever taken from Mesa County's department. Um, I believe she's basically saying those are forensic images, not actual hard drives, um, which a forensic image can be shared in a, a lot of different ways. It's not a hard drive. Um, it's a copy of a hard drive. Okay, and now this video is during the trusted build while Conan Hayes was in town. He... One of them, one of the staff members was recording and took a video of what was going on with her phone. Um, and he was FaceTiming with uh, a man named Patrick Burns. You can look him up. He was the former CEO of um, Overstock.com. And, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and play that video right now too. Well, dirty politicians around the country started worrying about Maricopa audits happening in their counties and their states, and they started preparing. And the Secretary of State of Colorado, Jenna Griswold, who's dirty, was so made arrangements and said, Dominion's going to come in and they're going to wipe your, well, no, they said they're going to just, just touch this little part of the machine that's the, the application that has their software on it. They're not going to touch the other stuff. Well, Tina Peters, Mesa County, Colorado, says, that's, I'm not sure I believe that. I'm not sure anyone should be in here fiddling with these machines. And she caused a computer scientist, a, a white hat hacker, a licensed guy who can give court testimony and affidavits, very, very high end white hat security guy who works for the government all the time, does all, and has done all kinds of projects for them. And he, gives, he can write affidavits that show up and use in hundreds of court cases and things like this. She got this fellow in. Now, what's funny is this guy happens to be a badass. He's a real badass. I'm not going to tell you anything more. He's a badass, but he's an unassuming badass. And he went in and, you know, got some, they gave him some county credentials or something. And he dressed up like a little nerd. And he went in and he, and he took an image, a forensic image that could be producible in court. That's what he does a forensic image of the hard drive on the election equipment as it existed in county before the guys with their trusted build showed up. Then the guys with a trusted build showed up. And what's funny is, and unbeknownst to them, the fellow sitting next to the, one of the county workers while 
Dominion and the Secretary of State, I believe, had her own people in there with Dominion to do this trusted bill. Unbeknownst to them, one of those county workers wasn't really a county worker. Like one of those county workers was this outside court certified cyber guy who was keeping an eye on them. He actually called me from the middle. He was sitting next to them at one point that day. This was back, I think, in May, May or June of last year. He actually called me on FaceTime and he sat there telling me, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I'm seeing these people commit a, fel a million felonies and right next to me and I'm just watching them. And he had to FaceTime up so I could see the people doing what they were doing. And he also took some videos of them doing what they were doing, which is highly illegal. They were wiping out, they wiped out the entire hard drive of the 20, they contained 2020 election. So it could never be verified. It could never be audited now. That's one thing they did. And then they installed on top of it, their new build, which was, so, so once they were gone, he then got a forensic image of that build, of that hard drive. And a forensic image means a perfect bit by bit copy. Then those two things were sent. So uh, those, those were things were sent to some computer scientists. I'll, I'll this, I'm getting out of my, he had a name like Billy or something on his name tag. Billy, the county worker. Hey, message to Dominion and Colorado Secretary of State. That guy with Billy on his name tag next to you, he was actually one of ours. He was filming you fuckers. <laughs> he was filming you fuckers. Um, and those two reports got, those two images, the hard drive went out to some computer, these high-end computer science professionals who are now working for the Tina Peters defense team. Why does she need a defense team? Because when the Colorado Secretary of State found out what she did, she's sick the authorities on Tina Peters. Tina Peters, who's just trying to do her job and caught this crook, that crook has now gotten her indicted because she let someone else into the Colorado, into the, she let somebody else on the machine. She let somebody, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Well, these are, which incidentally, that fellow who I described, the guy who got all buttoned up and went in and posed as a little wimpy computer guy and, and did all this uh, filming, sat next to the Dominion guys and filmed them when they came in and played with the machine. It has the films, incidentally, of them doing this. Maybe I shouldn't be, it's just gonna be interesting if they deny, if, I don't know how they could deny this, it's all black and white now, but where they did deny it, there was actually a, a county worker there with them who was talking on his phone a lot. He was actually filming them. Just so you guys know, Jenna Griswold, just so you know, your people were being filmed while they were in there doing the sitting at the computer. Ha ha ha. So now in the bizarre world we live in, uh, in the bizarre world we live in, the secretary of state got that county recorder arrested got her and 10 indictments. And she's looking at 10 indictments for things like, you know, letting someone else make a copy of the hard drive and letting someone else enter the room who wasn't really a county recorder or a county of, you know, computer. Well, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. Her job was protecting the integrity of the data, the records of Mesa, Colorado. And <laughs> to protect that, that's what the county recorder does. And she she did something, you know, she had something a little unusual thrown at her and she took a little unusual step herself. Okay, so in that video, you know, you can you can tell Patrick is starting to starting to explain who Conan Hayes might be or what he may have told Tina Peters um, to get them to hide his identity. He says he's a white hat hacker for the government. He says that whatever um, information he gathers is producible in court. So now we have two um, short clips. These are Tina Peters' own words describing why she hid Conan Hayes' identity. Um, it, from her own, this was on a, a the conservative daily podcast, and these are two short clips that we're going to play back to back um, while she's on that podcast joke but this person had high very high high level um clearance in the u.s government and um and this gerald wood has put this person and his family in jeopardy now and um you know i, I just feel bad I, I it's really a shame i gave my word um to a very high level um cyber expert that had um, put their life on the line to cause the arrest of the biggest human trafficking ring, I think, in the world, back, yeah. back page. Yeah. And I made him a promise. I said, you know, 
I will, I, I will protect you. Okay, so you've heard a lot of other information. Um, one of the last things she said was uh, that he helped take down Backpage. And because, you know, my question, like I said, was why, why did we shut the cameras off? So that led to the question of, okay, well, we shut the cameras off to hide Conan Hayes' identity. And then the question is, okay, who's Conan Hayes? Well, she says he works high, has high level clearance for the government. Patrick Byrne says he has government clearance as a white hat hacker. That his what he gathers is permissible or will work in court. Um, and uh, I did a little research on Backpage because I'm like, what is Backpage, right? So he helped take down Backpage. What is that? And I won't go through it. It's just you can see that it was ta it was a website and um, it was taken down by the government. <laughs> um, and so supposedly Conan Hayes told Tina Peters that he was involved in taking down Backpage. So he was uh, if if he was working on that specifically, then it seems that he was working in concert with the Department of Justice and the FBI. Um, because that's how Backpage got taken down. And so that makes you go, okay, so, so it's, does Conan Hayes work for the FBI? Does Conan, who, what government agency does Conan Hayes work for? You kind of got all of the video evidence. Um, you can go through the arrest affidavits. There's, there's more, you know, just confirming that Conan was here. So this is the part where I ask the hard questions, the questions that aren't answered. And none of these will be answered until the trial. Um, and I'm hoping that we get the answers to these questions during the trial. The trial set for, I think, January 23rd of next year. Um, just a, yeah, like six months from now. <laughs> um, so here's the questions. Conan Hayes supposedly helped take down Backpage with the Department of Justice. Now, there's no evidence. I mean, I've looked everywhere to try to figure out if there's his name is linked to anything having to do with Backpage, and it, you can't find anything. Um, if you find it, please put it in the comments. Um, but, you know, if he works for the government, they're not going to put his name on everything. So the question I have is, you know, that the Backpage um, takedown, you know, seems to, be a, to, seems to have been done in concert with the Department of Justice. Um, and when Conan Hayes comes to Mesa County as a white hat hacker to essentially run, if you just think about it, it looks like it's a sting operation, right? He's there to catch Dominion doing something. Um, and he's, they're videotaping it and he's catching them, you know, what are they deleting off the machines? Um, they said they were going to wipe the machines. They didn't wipe them, but they did delete some, you know, files. When he came to Mesa County. He didn't contact local law enforcement. He didn't work with the sheriff department, the sheriff's department. He didn't work with the DA. He didn't contact the local FBI, like the Colorado branch. Um, he didn't contact any local, he, he didn't, he didn't get a hold of our law enforcement. And Tina hid his identity and um, didn't tell her bosses, didn't tell the county commissioners, uh, didn't tell the DA. She, so she didn't tell the DA. She didn't, you know, Conan didn't tell him. So our local law enforcement had no idea this was going on. And he, according to Patrick Burns and Tina Peters, has high level credentials working for the government but he didn't contact any of anybody when he came to do this. Um, the other really weird question when you think about this is if he works for the government, why does he need his hotel room paid for, for four nights by Sharona Bishop? Um, that is on the affidavit as well. It, I mean, don't you think that a person that works for the government would be able to pay for their trip and pay for their hotel. Um, 
that's just really strange that somebody that works for the government doesn't contact local law enforcement and doesn't pay for their own hotel. Um, and then the more, okay, so then the more you go, th you know, down that line of thinking, if you have to, you have to ask yourself this question. Tina believed for sure that he had these credentials. He worked for the government. She did not tell the local law enforcement until after the grand jury trial months later. So she, so she kept it a secret that whole time. Um, why did Conan not just come back to town and present his credentials? Why, why didn't he come in and say, no, I, I helped take down Backpage. Here's my credentials. This is what I do. This is the agency I work for. Conan Hayes hasn't come back. Um, and this is a year later now. Um, he still hasn't come back to present his credentials to our local law enforcement or the DA or anyone. And so that's another really weird question, right? You have to start asking like, okay, why, right? Now, from the perspective of, uh, you know, looking at this, what Tina, her involvement is, she, you know, she had kept this secret from all of our local law enforcement. So whatever, whatever, whatever Conan Hayes is actually doing, she had kept that a secret. And he did not work in concert with our local law enforcement. So you have to ask the question, like, is Conan Hayes working for like some rogue government agency that doesn't work within the law? Um, and if he does, then why wouldn't he work with our local our sheriff or anybody else. Um, and so if he works for a rogue government agency that isn't working within the law, well, would anything he found be permissible in court is one question, like Patrick Burns had said. But another question is, um, does that mean, you know, this whole act was a rogue act, you know? Um, so that, that, that's an interesting question. These are the questions we don't have answers to. Um, and then if it's, if, if Conan doesn't work for a rogue government agency, I mean, did he present credentials to Tina? Did Tina do a background check on Conan Hayes? Did she get anything from him to assure her that he worked for a government agency? when they went to go ahead and pay for his hotel room? Um, I don't know those answers. Um, I don't know how much background they did on, on him, you know, but you would think that you would do a lot of background checking on someone that you're going to potentially put yourself and your staff and others in, find, in legal trouble over hiding their identity. You would think that you would really make sure that this is the right thing to do. Now, the strange thing when you ask Tina's in, about Tina's involvement is that she didn't contact local law enforcement either about this. Now, if you were performing a sting operation with somebody you believed worked in the government, wouldn't you make sure that the DA was involved? Wouldn't you make sure that the sheriff is aware or somebody in local law enforcement knew that you're working with this government agent, here's the credentials this agent presented me, you know, and, and, and work in concert with those law enforcement agencies. So regardless of whether, you know, whatever Conan Hayes, who he actually works for, Tina Peters act is outside of the law. It is outside of working with our law enforcement, um, no matter whether what, no matter what he does, and if he doesn't come back to present his credentials to tell everybody, hey, no, you know, I work for FBI or I work for this group, you know, then why, you know, and so that leads you to a different question, and this one is kind of more like a rabbit trail. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but 
this is probably, if this is the answer to, to the question of who is Conan Hayes and who does he work for, then a lot of people will really need to work through that. <laughs> um, because the other option I've come up with, just trying to figure out, you know, what kind of government agency a guy would work for where he doesn't even get that they don't pay for his hotel and he doesn't work with the local law enforcement. The other, the other question is, does he even work for any government agency? Was he impersonating an FBI agent? I mean, Tina might have a case for that, by the way. Um, but, you know, does he do any of this? Is he potentially just playing a game with people. There are people that do this. There are people, there are people that get catfished all the time. And the more you think about it, Conan took the information that he got. And if he works for a government agency, he went and, and he took that information and just uploaded it for Ron Watkins presentation and gave the videos to Patrick Burns and Ron Watkins to put on the, and Ron put it on his telegram channel. So why is somebody who's working to gather evidence to put people to trial, so to speak, just leaking information to people who are just putting it on the internet? Don't you think that they would be gathering that evidence, getting it ready to present to a court of law? of some kind. So you can go down those rabbit trails, but you have to ask yourself, who's Ron Watkins? Why is he involved in this? Does Ron Watkins work for the military? Does he have some kind of clearance? Well, you go, if you go into Ron Watkins history, you start asking the question, who is he? Um, you know, people say that he ran QAnon for a long time. He ran the Q posts. Uh, he used to own 8chan with his dad. And um, the, the guy that started A-Chan, who used to work with Ron and his dad, has stated multiple times, and we'll put these videos at the very bottom, that, you know, that they were LARPing, that they were catfishing people, basically. They were playing some kind of game to see how far all of these um, ideas they could push on the internet would go. And they, they did it to Trump supporters. They did it to, you know, to get people riled up and they they just wanted to see how far they could get their game to go and it spread around the internet and that's why you'd hear all these weird predictions like hillary clinton is about to get arrested on friday and then hillary clinton never gets arrested and then all these people are going to be arrested in the streets by the military on this day and it doesn't happen you know and we've heard these predictions these crazy internet predictions over and over and over and they don't happen and um so you can go down the rabbit trails. I don't have the answers to that. I have my theory about it based on all of that information gathering. Um, Patrick Burns also, you know, shared a lot of QAnon posts and things like that. He was in the White House with Donald Trump. There's a whole, you know, bunch of history to that. But you can, you can just look into the history of that. But my point is either Conan Hayes works for a real legitimate government agency and he just hasn't presented his credentials and he didn't work with local law enforcement, even though they said what he gathered could be presented to a court. Or he's a guy that's just out having fun that basically kind of catfished Tina Peters and Sharona Bishop. Um, you can come up with your own theories about it. I'm not, I, I just, the things that you saw, everything you've seen here, it doesn't line up. It doesn't make sense um, if he works for the government. Now, that, if you really go back to the original question I had, why did they shut the cameras off? That's the answer. Whatever government agency or whatever it is that Conan Hayes actually does, that's the answer. And we need that answer. And I sure hope that he comes and testifies and just clears this up, whatever it is. Um, 
And if he doesn't come testify, if he pleads the fifth, then that could mean that Tina Peters is in some serious trouble. And the guy that she hid his identity that ended up, you know, him being in trouble for didn't really help her out back. <laughs> he just kind of left her hanging. Um, so that's the end of this. I'm just leaving it open-ended from here. Comment, comment in the comment section, uh, share this to people. I don't, I'm not looking for anything out of this. I just want my community to have a full set of information on one video to ask this really important question, you know, moving forward and to help kind of clear up some of the myths of what had happened. So I uh, appreciate you watching it and go ahead and ask me questions or put everything you want in the comments.